The audacious historical psychodrama Mary and George has resurrected these formidable characters to portray a twisted battle of sex, love and power. Mary's character was outrageous. No family rose this quickly in such a high trajectory. She essentially pimped out her very hot second son to seduce James I. What was motivating Mary Villiers? I think ambition. This is Jacobean history, but not as you know it. This is Mary and George and me. This is my dream wardrobe, legit. If I could open my wardrobe and it was just like ye olde white frilly things, I'd be thrilled. I feel like these fabrics are the more drab end because they're for the crowd rather than the main characters. Peasants. It's a sexy hat. Incredible. Isn't that nice? What's up? Too much? And enough messing around, it was time to remember the reason I was here. So the lady who heads up this entire department, who's like kind of the imagination behind all of these beautiful costumes is a woman called Annie. And I'm gonna go and find her and ask her to tell me what the hell is going on here. So much effeminate bow scenarios going on. It's nonsense. <laughs> I love it. That's it's, like when I try and like scuff up my converse so they look a bit cooler. I'll send them over to us. <laughs> Bum rolls. Bum rolls. I love them. Beautiful. It's so nice. Well, we obviously got on like a house on fire. Should we talk about Jacobean fashion in general? Like, how did you start to put all of this together? The first port of call is a painting. At this period, court paintings were very heavily stylized. So what you get is a very abstract line of beauty, which is actually very useful for design because designing costume, you're always trying to find the keys into the period. I think for me, certainly it's very clear what the Jacobean shapes are. And they're very exciting because they haven't really been done. There's a lot of Elizabethan yeah. and Tudor yeah. costume and then later Stuart stuff around, but yeah. not this period. When it came to approaching Mary's costume, where did you start? I met Julie and basically fitted shapes on her to see what worked on her figure mm -hmm. and what worked with the timeline. This is Mary. All of this is her costume. Right. This is her kind of most iconic sort of look. Mm -hmm. I think this shape and it, it's getting, I think, quite modern. It's a, almost new lookish. It's it's has totally. a, has a Contemporary simplicity, but that seemed quite important for her as a character that, you know, we understood her as a woman with power yeah. and not cluttered with all the artifice of court. This, for example, is when she becomes countess. Wow. It really is her Cinderella moment. Yeah. So we went a bit Beautiful. flash. And this is a more quiet version, but this is her portrait just before the height of her wealth and powers. Yeah. In Mary's story, the start of her story, she's fallen on hard times. She's got a grotty hem. She's got a very grotty hem. She had had money yeah. and, and it all went terribly wrong. She ended up dragging herself through the mud, metaphorically and physically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to describe that whole world as mouldy cheese, stale bread, parched bones, congealed blood. <laughs> Some of my favourite pans in that yeah. list. As she moves through her story, she becomes more and more uh, eloquent in her clothing choices and um, wears a ridiculously wrong dress at court when she finally gets into court, which is purple, which is a complete taboo thing mm, to wear. That's a no-no. And she wears it in the style of Elizabeth I. But she's doing that to get noticed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everything she does is she's calculating. See, this is the power of clothes, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. What was the most surprising thing to learn about Jacobean dress, other than the arm cages? Is there anything else? <laughs> the falling ruff, this sort of strange transition from wide sticky outy ruff to a soft falling ruff that then developed into these huge lacy collars. Oh, that's where that comes from. Yeah, because it all started off with a little frill at the neck yeah. in, in Tudor times. And as people got more extravagant, the frill got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it started flopping down. Yeah. <laughs> I was seeing some real potential in this iconic accessory, and luckily enough, just a few desks down, I found Maria, resident ruff maker and authority on all things frilly collar. What typifies a Jacobean ruff? Everything you see before was solid, very, very plain shape, maybe with a little trim around. Yeah. 
And then from 1570s, they started using lace. Cool that men and women both had them on. So it wasn't just the girls, the guys were yeah. really giving it their best shot as well. Like Annie said, it was a transition time from this masculine Tudor stuff into more Baroque, feminine. Everything just became less rigid and square. But also that might be more a, a king that's more open-minded about these things. Like if Henry VIII was more kind of like, I'm a dude yeah. and I'm big, yeah. but old mate James is more mm -hmm. like, well, let's enjoy some snacks. And yes. We'll shag. James the first seems more masculine in a way, and the fact that he's able to dress more effeminately, he's probably yeah. more confident. This is George's collar. It's actually back to front. Oh my God. <laughs> we are Mortified. Open. This is upside down. Oh my God, come on, man. Next, Annie was taking me to meet David, the principal costume cutter. Very noble. I it's couldn't help but get a little bit distracted nice. along the way. It feels right. That's amazing. Ah, we found him. How is Jacobean men's fashion different to the women's? In terms of like societal position, they were running the shop, so they didn't need the dresses, the cumbersome dresses. Their costume and their fashion was a bit more wearable. Still, yeah. the silhouette was extreme compared to what it is today. This is for George, this is our um, main boy. So Nick is wearing this. The main body or the main jacket was the doublet and that would be worn as a modern day jacket sort yeah. of thing. Clothing was expensive. So normal men of the time could only afford say one doublet or maybe two doublets, yeah. but then they would say, let's order six more sleeves. Oh great, um, so, so it's, it's like all a modular outfit. Bit like a kind of modern capsule wardrobe. Yeah, the line of it is sort of like a modern leather jacket. Yeah. Like so a biker jacket. We've also. softened the silhouette a little bit and looked to try and bring in modern interpretations. That's also the thing which we need to remember. We've been interpreting a Jacobean silhouette for a modern body. All of our body shapes as men um, are completely different to what they were in Jacobean times. In, in what way? More athletic, more broad shoulders, taller as well. So. Yeah. It's been quite interesting um, trying to explain the silhouette to our actors as well because the shape is not something that we see um, in modern day. I googled George Villiers just to see what oh, yeah. he looked like and found uh -huh. a portrait where he looks like he's wearing like a black leather jacket barnacled in pearls. Yeah, they loved pearls. The pearl was a symbol of their might at sea and they're beautiful and also they're light emitting and, and it was Queen Anne's favourite jewel as well. Apparently. I like the idea that George might have been conquered by James, that's why he's got so many pearls <laughs> on his costume. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's also got a bit of a Black Adder vibe to it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> One scene, never on scene. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Leaving the makers in peace to work their craft, it was finally time for what I'd really come here for. We're looking for a dress to try on. Can I nick that? Do I need underpants? I'm going to get changed and when I come back, I'm going to be a dazzling Jacobean lady. <laughs> Dazzled. Come on in. The chemise is as soft as butter. I'm just into how it looks now. It's so comfy, the bum roll. I feel like you could sit anywhere and it would be cozy. Junk in the trunk there. Oof. Lovely. It just feels like you're being held. So it's not uncomfortable, it's actually quite reassuring. <laughs> it's like being swaddled as a baby. I'm just a lonely Jacobean woman. Another day, another glorious trailer. Thank you. Time to get to work. For the period that we're doing Jacobean, ladies wouldn't wear makeup. Really? It was more prostitutes that would use it. Oh so our aim is to make you look flawless, because yeah. that was the fashion, very pale. If you were tanned, you were perceived as working outdoors, so a labourer, whereas pale skin indicates that you live indoors, you have servants, people to do everything for you. And how pale would they go? Is it like... As pale as they could be. Similar to Elizabethan times, like those pictures of Queen Elizabeth we yes, see with she, like white... She, she used a white lead on her skin, but unfortunately that ate the skin and it poisoned the wearer. So they had other things like ground up rice or starch powder that they would mix to make base. There was no commercial products as such. Behind me I noticed 
a photograph of a guy with a silver nose on? That is the advanced stage of syphilis, and it would eat all the soft bones of your face, so your nose would be eaten away. You would go mad because it hurt the brain. So the pewter nose, it's because he's lost his nose. Wow. Paul, I love the makeup so much. Can we add a wig so I can have the full Yes, indeed. Experience? So the fashion was to have some height at the front, keep it flat on top, and then a bun at the back. And that was almost universal. The influence came from the French court, so Britain followed the French fashions. Classic. So we've prepped one here for you. Great. Which we'll put on now. I'm just so to jazzed. Complete the effect. In our story, we have Queen Anne of Denmark. Mm -hmm. She was the wife of King James I. They didn't live together or anything, had a very distant relationship. But her hairdos, which we have here, were very, very high, which we achieved with a cage inside. Amazing. That uh, denoted a status. So other courtiers would never have hair as big as she did. They weren't uh, allowed or it just wasn't It possible. just wasn't done. Right. And later on in this century, it became a real thing in society that the bigger your hair, the more important you were. The higher the hair, the closer to God, as Dolly Parton That's said. right. Do you just, to hold just that? Just put your fingers underneath if you could. Yeah. That's it. And get it on there at the front. <gasps> oh my God, and I'm blonde. <laughs> A lot of dreams are coming true today for me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think of Mickey Mouse. Oh my God, I love it! Wow! I think I was born in the wrong time. This might be my look. <laughs> <laughs>